The return of KP featured the former New York Knick being one of four Celtic 20 plus point scorers next to Derek White, who recorded his first career triple double, Crypto P, who made five threes, and Jalen Brown, who continued to set the league on fire with a 31 piece. The Seas took care of business in a doubleheader against bottom feeders without Tatum and Holiday on the second night of a back to back. The changes in Tatum and Brown's game this season that are crucial, plus a breakdown of how the top team in the league made history amidst blowing out Washington and Detroit is coming up. That and a lot more that trust me you cannot miss are on their way. Right quick, just 12.2% of my audience is subbed. So if you happen to not be in that percentage and or this is your first time watching my content, please hit the sub box. Splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm as well. Thank you tremendously for your support on my videos throughout this entire season, y'all. As I wanted to say, your support is greatly appreciated. In their most recent 119-94 W over Detroit, the 23-24 Celtics surpassed the 16-17 Warriors for the fourth largest point differential in NBA history within a single season. A game before that, a 130-104 W over Washington featured Jason Tatum unsurprisingly going off for 30, but on the other hand, Uncle Sam Hauser shockingly going off for 10 made three-pointers, matching Tatum's 30, while posting a bewildering 115.4% true shooting mark for the game. Sam Hauser is clearly another deadly deep-range weapon that has to be seriously accounted for by defenses, which is overwhelming as hell for a Opponents. Hauser did injure his ankle, yet thankfully walked to the locker room under his own power. Sam missed the latter of the back-to-back, -back, but will be a game-time decision for Boston's next matchup against the second-seeded Milwaukee Bucks on Wednesday night. Sam's career high in scoring was on the same night as his bench running mate Peyton Pritchard, recording a career high in assists. The development of Peyton is a story for another day, but it's pretty insane how far he's come since he was a rookie. In my last video, we delved into a film breakdown of Drew Holiday's patented defense, but glossed over what he's done for a number one seed offensively. Along with Sam Hauser, the Milwaukee legend is top 10 in three point percentage, and in fact, even ranks higher than Uncle Sam in that category, up at number four in deep range efficiency across the NBA. Sniper Drew is not to be overlooked. Well, to be fair, with this deadly Celtics attack, you have to give something up. More importantly than the luxury of three-point efficiency Drew is providing, as discussed as the main point with Holiday from day one on my channel series covering the Celtics throughout the 23-24 season, it's the organization level Holiday brings you that makes him the perfect fit in Boston. Because in years past, you had the unpredictability factor of a defensive specialist quarterbacking the offense in Marcus Smart. As generational of a defender that he is, Smart's turnovers and bad shot selection had a way of throwing off the flow. Conversely for Drew, Stemming all the way back to his days as a first option in Philadelphia during the early 2010s, Holiday's made a commitment to, and had the ability to, all throughout his career, to get the best shot possible on any given trip. That's always Drew's number one priority. Holiday has that IQ and poise to execute Missoula's system and identity on both sides of the court. Holiday's also, let's face it, a much more naturally gifted offensive player than Smart, with all due respect. My point is, Marcus can be your Tony Allen, but expecting him to be your Rajon Rondo isn't ideal. Whereas, more fluid playmakers in Drew and Derek running the show are higher IQ quarterbacks for two of the best wing players on planet Earth, being Tatum and Brown. For a player in a breakout season, D. White, following the first three months of his 23-24 campaign where he was on a tear, Derek had a rough January, as you can see by his numbers over a 15-game span for that month. However, White has since bounced back by getting his efficiency back to where it was early in the season. Even just after his struggles, though, Derek's humility was displayed when he looked in the mirror and accepted that he was in a slump, saying, quote, just gotta go back to the basics, stuff that you've been doing your whole life. Personally, I was focusing on staying in my shot and getting the arc, so those were the two things I was trying to focus on most of the game, and I was able to see one go down and go from there. So go back to the basics, stay in the shot, hold your follow through, simple things like that, end quote. That statement was from almost two months ago, but based off the fact that since that message, White's posted an incredible 48-42-95 shooting split, the Bald Mamba's breakout year has been resumed for a while now. His scoring still isn't where it was early in the year, 
player, but it doesn't need to be with all of Boston's offensive firepower. Derek staying around that incredibly efficient shooting line of 48, 42, 95, while bringing that pristine Colorado Buffalo aura is all that's required for the two-way sharpshooting shot creator. Look for this man Derek to continue to make momentum shifting plays in the playoffs like he's done all throughout the 82 game grind. White's springiness is generational for a guard, and when mixing this with his mobility and grittiness, it makes the bald mamba an all NBA defender who can annoy the living hell out of attackers. When it comes to Boston's number one option, Braun and JJ talked about it in a clip preview in their Mind the Game podcast, a dope pod hoop heads are hyped as hell about by the way, but they talked about Jason Tatum's ability to read defensive coverages, particularly reacting to help defense from low men, with James and Redick articulating how that's a night and day better aspect of JT's game than it was back in 2022's NBA Finals, where Golden State had some success blitzing him on the back side and making him uncomfortable. Tatum knowing how he's going to be defended and intelligently reacting to that makes things so much easier on everyone else, whether it's poor Zynga, Drew, White, Hauser, list goes on and on, space in the floor or Brown working off the ball, Tatum's increasingly disciplined IQ gets everything flowing for this Boston team as a whole. At the moment, what isn't being talked about nearly enough by fans, media, or even podcasting players is the improvement to 1B scoring option Jalen Brown's repertoire. Responding to the criticism he received after the 2023 playoffs about his left hand, some of which I was guilty of dishing out, you see Brown signal to that left hand almost every drive to it. Of course, Brown had that left-handed MJ glove throw down in the dunk contest, so all around Jalen's been clapping back at the haters. Next to Tatum's vamped IQ level, the best sign for the Celtics chances in 2024 is Brown's vamped ambidextrousness in my opinion. Jalen's evidently newfound comfort level attack into his left makes him a night and day different type of player to defend this year. For many years, Brown's world class jump out of the gym hops combined with his ability to hit shots from almost anywhere, either manufacturing offense off the dribble or spotting up, has driven the Celtics to five conference finals appearances throughout his career. However, the finesse with both hands was an area the All-NBA player needed to improve in, and thankfully, by the looks of it at least, Jalen's made the much-needed improvement. To be fair though, and the same thing goes for Tatum's IQ, who knows how effective Brown's left hand will be once the pressure maxes out and opposing coaches' game plans intensify in the postseason and as we get deeper into the spring. But Jalen regularly driving to, and at times finishing with that offhand, makes it a visibly improved aspect to the man's game just based off the volume at which he's attacking at. In years past, you could either cut off the right driving angle or crowd the right side of the basket, with the initial objective being to funnel Brown to his left at all costs. It may be too early to definitively say this, but based off the tape I've seen from him all year, Jalen now seems ready to adapt much more smoothly to that game plan he'll inevitably face, which will try to funnel him left or crowd the right side of the basket. When you think about it, this improvement is just as important as anything else when it comes to what Boston needs to have a smooth playoff run. We rave about the bald Mamba, Tingus Pingus, Fast PP, and Drew, but Brown's your second scorer who could very well be the number one guy in a playoff off series or two, so how polished he is with both hands finishing around the hoop in traffic or whatever the case may be is vital. On a separate note, the addition of Xavier Tillman Sr., who last month was traded from the Grizzlies in exchange for two second round picks in Lamar Stevens, gives the Celtics that extra bit of muscle up front. Xavier provides this 2024 Boston roster with not only insurance for their primary big men in case of an injury, but more intriguingly, Tillman gives you lineup versatility. While Xavier's not a pure center, he's capable of guarding opposing five men. Considering the center position is low-key taken over as the most dominant spot in the game of basketball, throwing multiple bodies at the likes of Jokic and Bede or Adebayo in likely playoff matchups down the line with at least one of those top bigs is something you'll have to do to keep their production somewhat in check over a seven-game series. With Cornette, Horford, hopefully Stevens gives Namiyash Keita a full-time contract, and with now Tillman, the Celtics seem to be fully equipped to defend top-tier big men in this year's playoffs. 
as mentioned in my last video though, Porzingis has some improvements to make defensively. Tillman's ability to hold his ground in the post though, as well as rebound well, and set screens slash generally play with a heads up wherewithal as a traditional yet mobile big man, makes his acquisition an upgrade for GM wizard Brad Stevens. That's going to come in handy at some point in a major way. That's what your boy's predicting at least. In your opinion though, What's the biggest difference with the Celtics in comparison to prior years? Best answer gets next video's commenter shout out while competing to be one of five commenters in position to win either a free jersey or shoe of their choosing. Today's commenter shout out goes to Christian Moore, exceptionally written take from a one-time commenter shout out giveaway winner in Christian. Appreciate every take though. This was your boy Dflow, and I'll see you next video.